Facts. Matabuna versus servants. Facts. The plaintiff said the donation made by her brother to the defendant was invalid. They were already living maritally as common law spouses when the donation took place. Article 133 of the Civil Code provides, donations between spouses during marriage shall be null and void. The defendant, however, said the donation was made before their marriage took place. Issue. Is the ban on donations applicable to live-in partners? Held. Yes, ban on donations is applicable to common law spouses to prevent the possibility of undue influence and improper pressure exerted by one spouse to another. Since the relationship of the plaintiff's brother and the defendant was legitimated by their marriage, the South Carolina said that Article 1001 of the Civil Code applies. Under this provision, should brothers and sisters or their children survive with the widow or widower, the latter shall be entitled to a half of the inheritance, and the brothers and sisters or the children the other half. People vs. Santayana Facts The defendant, who was found in the Plaza Miranda in possession of a firearm, was charged with illegal possession of firearms. Before the court, he contended that he was a special agent. Issue can the defendant be convicted? Held. No, because the prevailing doctrine was the Macarandan case. The appointment of a civilian as a secret agent who maintained peace and order sufficiently put him within the category of police officer. A police officer is not prohibited under Section 879 of the Revised Administrative Code. The South Carolina said the case of People v. Mapper revoked the doctrine in the Macabandang case only on August 30, 1967. People v. Estenzo Facts Because of Rule 6236, the respondents petitioned to reopen a 1940 case, declaring a lot in or mock, leet, a public land. R. 6236 extended the time limit of application of free patents and petition for judicial confirmation of imperfect and incomplete titles until 1976. The term was later extended to 1980. Before R. 6236 was for 2061, which extended the time limit of application of free patents, petition for judicial confirmation of imperfect and incomplete titles and reopening of cadastral proceedings to 1968. The respondents said that since R. 6236 can be extended till 1980, reopening of cadastral proceedings may be extended too. The petitioners opposed because the respondents' petition was barred by the expiration for reopening of cadastral proceedings. Issue. Does the extension provided under a 6236 apply to reopening of cadastral proceedings? Held. No, because the legal maxim, expressio unius est exclusio alterius, applies. The South Carolina said the judiciary couldn't alter a 6236. Altering it, it said, is the function of the legislative branch. Mutuck v. Cumlick Facts the petitioner questioned the validity of a commission on election ruling that prohibited him of the use of tape jingles during his campaign. Cumlick said tape jingles are included in the prohibition under the revised election code to purchase, produce and distribute electoral propaganda gadgets, such as pens, lighters. The petitioner argued that prohibiting his use of tape jingles was constitutionally violative of his right to freedom of speech. Issue. Are tape jingles included in the prohibition? Held. No, because under the principle of e just m generis, tape jingles do not belong to the same kind or class as contemplated in the revised election code. E just m generis means that the enumeration of class of things includes others of the same class. People vs. Manantin. Facts. The defendant, a justice of peace was accused of violating Section 54 of the Revised Election Code, no justice, judge, fiscal shall aid any candidate in any election, except to vote. He raised three statutory construction arguments, expressio unius est exclusio alterius, casus omissus pro omissu habendius est, 
and presumption in favor of accused for penal statutes. Issue. Is justice of peace included in the prohibition of Section 54 of the Revised Election Code? Held. Yes, because there was no necessity to include justice of peace in the enumeration because legislative intent had availed itself of the more generic or broader term, judge. The South Carolina said congressional phraseology applies in this case. When the word judge was qualified by the phrase of the first instance, the words justice of peace would follow. But when the law simply said judge, the words justice of peace were omitted. Also, the South Carolina said the first and second arguments were not applicable because there was no exclusion or omission in this case. Justice of peace was merely called under a different name. As to the third argument, the South Carolina said it is not the only factor controlling the interpretation of penal statutes. Lopez v. CTA Facts The Manila's collector of customs imposed on the petitioner, who imported wire nettings from Germany, to pay additional custom duties. When the petitioner appealed the decision of the Manila's collector of customs to the Court of Tax Appeals, it dismissed the appeal for lack of jurisdiction under Section 7 of Re 1125, which provides that CTA shall exercise exclusive appellate jurisdiction to review by appeal decisions of the Commissioner of Customs. The petitioner said literal meaning of Section 11 of Re 1125 should be adopted. The provision states that those affected by decisions of the Collector of Customs may file an appeal in the CTA. Clearly. Section 7 and 11 of Re 1125 have a discrepancy. Issue. Are decisions of Collector of Customs appealable to the CTA? Held. Yes, there was only clerical error in Section 11 of Re 1125. The South Carolina said under Customs Law, Collectors of Customs are merely subordinates of the Commissioner of Customs. If Section 11 of Re 1125 were to be followed, the supervision and control of the Commissioner of Customs would be destroyed, which is not the legislative intention. Under the rule of Cassius Omises, the South Carolina said it is within the province of courts to correct error in Section 11 of Re 1125 to give way to the legislature's intention. Sancianco v. Rona Facts The petitioner was elected Barangay Captain, became the president of the Association of Barangay Councils and was appointed by the President of the Philippines as a member of the city Sunkanyang. Panglong Saad. He filed his certificate of candidacy for the Batasan election. However, he was unsuccessful. When the petitioner wanted to assume his post as a member of the city Sunkanyang Panglong Saad, the local government minister then said the petitioner was deemed to have resigned from his appointive position upon filing of his cock. The petitioner said that since Section 13 of Article 5 of BP 697 makes no distinction between elective and appointive official, it is clear that appointive officials are covered by the said provision. Issue. Is the petitioner resigned or on leave of absence from his post as a member of the city Sunkanyang Panglong Saad? Held. Resigned, because... As per considering and looking into the whole and every part of BP 697, it is clear that paragraph 1 covers appointive officials and paragraph 2 covers elective officials. An appointive official immediately ceases in office when he filed his cock. Justice Claudio Tiahaki dissented the majority's ruling, saying that the petitioner should be considered on forced leave of absence. Under the rule of Nocitor Asasis, the petitioner cannot fall under paragraph 1 because it refers to appointive officials. His positions were elective. Capati v. Ocampo Facts The plaintiff and the respondent entered into a construction contract, where all actions relating to the contract may be instituted in the court of first instance of Naga City. When the plaintiff, who resided in Pampanga, sued the defendant on the contract before the fee of Pampanga, the defendant said the venue of action was improperly laid. The plaintiff, on the other hand, said their agreement to hold the venue in the fee of Naga City was merely optional to both contracting parties. Issue. Is the stipulation of parties on venue restrictive or permissive? Held. Permissive, because May operates. 
to confer discretion upon a party. It connotes possibility, not certainty. Under Section 3 of Rule 4 of the Rules of Court, the parties are given the discretion or option of filing the action in their respective residences. GMRC v. Beltel Facts When the respondent applied for Certificate of Convenience with the National Telecommunications Commission, it said that a decision made by two of the three members composing a quasi-judicial body was entitled to promulgation. The petitioner, however, said decisions of NTC are lodged in the commissioner. Issue Is NTC a collegial body? Held Yes, because Section 16 of EO 546 proved us that the commission is composed of a commissioner and two deputy commissioners. The South Carolina pointed out that the word and is used to join or relate one another. Alphan vs. Republic Facts The petitioner wanted to change her name from Maria Estrella Veronica Primitiva Dutter to Estrella Alphan. She contended that she had been using Estrella Alphan since childhood. The lower court denied her petition because as legitimate daughter of Philomeno Dutter and Estrella Alphan, she should principally use the surname of her father invoking Article 364 of the Civil Code, legitimate and legitimated children shall principally use surname of father. Issue Does Article 364 of the Civil Code preclude the use of mother's surname? Held No, because the word principally is not equivalent to the word exclusively, so there is no legal obstacle if the child should choose to use surname of his or her mother. Rora v. Lopen Facts When the petitioner applied for probation after she was convicted of five counts of Estafa committed on different dates, the trial court said she was guilty of five offenses as to the different dates of commission of the felony complained of. The petitioner said there was only one conviction as there was only one decision rendered. Under the probation law, those who are previously convicted by final judgment of an offense are disqualified from probation. Issue How should the word previously be construed? Held The word previously means the date of conviction, not the date of the commission of crime. The South Carolina said when the petitioner applied for probation, he had no previous conviction by final judgment. Therefore, he can apply for probation. NHC v. Junko Facts The respondent, an engineer at the National Housing Corporation, was dismissed from service because of the crime of theft and malversation of public funds. The respondent brought the case to the National Labor Relations Commission. NHC opposed the action because the Civil Service Commission is the proper forum to lodge the complaint, since NHC is a 100% government-owned corporation. Issue is NHC covered by the Labor Code or laws and regulations governing the CFC? Held. The complaint is under the jurisdiction of the CFC. The South Carolina said in the 1973 Constitution, it provided that CFC embraces every branch, agency, subdivision and instrumentality of government, including the government-owned and controlled corporations. Also. The South Carolina said every was replaced by all in the 1987 Constitution to avoid ambiguity. Justice Jose Abad Santos dissented the majority's ruling, saying that only those corporations created by special laws are contemplated in the civil service provisions of the Constitution. This remark was a reiteration of Abad Santos' opinion for the commissioner of CSC who wanted to know the Scope of the Constitutional Provisions on Civil Service with Respect to Gox Demaphiles vs. Cumlick Facts The petitioner protested against the Board of Canvassers' action of rejecting an election return in a certain precinct in a town in Antique. The respondent said the election protest was moot because he had already taken oath and assumed office as mayor by virtue of Re 4870. This law provides the first mayor. Vice Mayor and Councillor shall be elected in the next general election for local officials and shall have qualified. The respondent argued that the phrase shall have qualified entitled him to assume office immediately after his election. Issue How should the phrase shall have qualified be construed? Held It is devoid of any meaning. 
It failed to express any meaning. The South Carolina quoted the book, Alice in Wonderland, if there's no meaning to it, that saves the world of trouble. Therefore, the South Carolina annulled the proclamation of the respondent and ordered the board of canvassers to recanvass all votes, including the election return in a precinct in question. Arabe vs. Kfi of Zamboan Codel Nort. Facts. The petitioner, a distributor of gas, oil, and other petroleum products, was made to pay sales tax on its gasoline sales under Ordinance 53. It instituted a complaint to the trial court, contending that Re 2264 prohibits municipalities to impose sales tax on gasoline, only specific tax on gasoline. Section 2 of Re 2264 provides, municipalities shall, in no case, impose any tax on sales or other taxes on articles subject to specific tax, except gasoline, under the provision of the National Internal Revenue Code. Issue. Can municipality impose sales tax on gasoline? Held. Yes, it doesn't apply only to specific tax but also to sales tax because gasoline is of no profitable use to the companies which own it unless turned over to the consuming public who must pay for the right to obtain the commodity. People vs. Media Facts. The accused, together with some others, was charged with murder frustrated murder, and violation of Re 6539. Section 14 of Re 6539 provides. He penalty of reclusion perpetua to death shall be imposed when the owner, driver or occupant of the carnapped motor vehicle is killed or raped in the course of the commission of the carnapping or on the occasion thereof. Issue. Do the words is killed make distinction between homicide and murder? Held. No, the South Carolina said whether it is one or the other which is committed in the course of carnapping or on the occasion thereof makes no difference insofar as the penalty is concerned. The South Carolina said it follows then that the killing of the victim in this crime, whether it be homicide or murder, cannot be treated as a separate offense, but should only be considered to qualify the crime or carnapping. Manila Railroad CO versus Collector of Customs. Facts. The plaintiff used dust shields, which is primarily made of wool, on its entire railway wagon. Under the tariff law of 1909, manufacturers of wool constituted 40% of ad valorem, while detached parts of vehicles made of wool for use of railways constituted 10% of ad valorem. The defendant decided that dust shields should be classified as manufacturers of wool. The trial judge overruled the defendant's decision, saying that dust shields should be classified as detached parts of vehicles for use of railways. Issue. What particular paragraph should apply? Held. Paragraph 197 of the Tariff Law of 1909 must apply. Paragraph 141 is a general provision, while paragraph 197 is a special provision. The South Carolina said where there is in the same statute a particular enactment and also a general one, which, in its most comprehensive sense, would include what is embraced in the former, the particular, enactment must be operative. Almeida vs. Florentino Facts the plaintiff and defendant claimed to the position of secretary to the municipal board of Pase City. The vice mayor appointed the plaintiff to the position who was, however, not recognized by the municipal board. The municipal board appointed the respondent. The plaintiff argued that section 12 of the Amendatory Act, or 2709, vesting appointments of all employees of the municipal board in the vice mayor, being the later act should apply to the board secretary. The trial court judge decided that the general appointing power of the vice mayor must be construed as not including that of the board secretary which was provided for in section 14 of the original charter of the city, R. 183. Issue. Which law applies on the matter of the appointment of the secretary of the municipal board of Passe City? Held. It is the original charter of the city or Re 183, since there is nothing in Re 2709 that indicates any intention on the part of the legislature to repeal, 
alter or modify in any way the provisions of Section 14 of Re 183. The South Carolina said that on the preamble of the Amendatory Act, it recites that it is an amendment to Section 12 of the City Charter, and no other. Laxamana v. Baltazar Facts When a mayor of a certain town in Pampanga was suspended, the respondent, who was the vice mayor, assumed office by virtue of the particular provision of Section 2195 of the Revised Administrative Code. The provincial governor, on the other hand, appointed the petitioner as mayor in pursuant to the general provision of Section 21 of the Revised Election Code. Issue which provision of law should apply? Held. Section 2195 of the Revised Administrative Code, because when general and particular provisions are inconsistent, the latter is paramount to the former. Butchwin Samuel Inc. v. Butchwin City. Facts. The petitioner was granted a legislative franchise, R. 399, for an electric light, heat and power system at two provinces. The respondent said Butchuan City was empowered under its charter to provide for levy and collection of taxes for general and special purposes. Which was why the city had imposed 2% tax on the gross sales or receipts of any business operated in the city by virtue of Ordinance 7, as amended by Ordinance 11, 131 and 148. The petitioner disputed the constitutionality of the taxing ordinance as it impairs the obligation of contract and deprives it of property without due process. Issue. Is the franchise business of petitioner within the coverage of the taxing ordinance? Held. No, the inclusion of the franchised business by the Butchuan City within the coverage of the questioned taxing ordinance is beyond the broad power of taxation of the city under its charter. The South Carolina said the franchise business of the petitioner was not subject to local government taxes because the National Internal Revenue Code already imposed a franchise tax. Also, the South Carolina said it must be noted that the franchise was granted by the Act of Legislature in 1949 while the city's charter was approved in 1950. The fact that one is special and the other is general creates a presumption that the special is to be considered as remaining an exception to the general. Ariata vs. Joya Facts The father of the defendant made several dispositions of his lots to his siblings by means of last will and testament. His lots were acquired from the insular government. The plaintiff opposed to the partition of the estate of the deceased because as the surviving spouse and under Section 16 of Act 1120, she had the absolute and exclusive right to all the lots. The defendant, including the siblings of the deceased, invoked the provisions of the Civil Code with respect to possession of lands in good faith insofar as their fruits are concerned. Issue Are the dispositions made by the deceased in his will, in pursuant to the Civil Code, valid? Held No because this civil code is of a general character, while Act 1120 is a special law. The latter should prevail. Therefore, the South Carolina held that the spouse was entitled exclusively to the lots in question. Teotico vs. City of Manila Facts The petitioner had an injury because he fell into an uncovered and unlighted manhole somewhere in Manila. Because of this accident, he lost his income during his incapacity to work and was humiliated by colleagues at work. He instituted an action for damages against the mayor and other officials, invoking Article 2189 of the Civil Code, Provinces, Cities and Municipalities shall be liable for damages for the death of, or injuries suffered by, any person by reason of defective conditions of roads, streets, bridges public building and other public works under control or supervision. The respondent, however, contended that Section 4 of Re 409 should prevail, the city shall not be liable or held for damages or injuries to persons or property arising from the failure of the mayor, the municipal board or any other city officers to enforce any other law or ordinance or from negligence of mayor, the municipal board or other officers. Issue which provision of law should apply? Held. Article 2189 of the Civil Code should apply. Insofar as its territorial application is concerned, 
Chapter 409 is a special law, and the civil code is a general legislation. But with regard to the subject matter of the provisions of Section 4 of Re 409 and Article 2189 of the Civil Code, the former establishes a general rule regarding the liability of Manila from negligence in general, while the latter constitutes a particular prescription making cities liable for injuries sustained due to defective streets in particular. David v. Cumlick Facts The Commission on Election Scheduled the Barangay elections to the second Sunday of May in 1997 by virtue of Ra 7160, which set the Barangay election to three years. The earlier law, Ra 6679, set it to five years. The petitioner argued that Ra 6679 should apply because it is a special law, while Ra 7160 is a general law. Issue how long is the term of barangay officials? Three years. It is basic that in case of an irreconcilable conflict between two laws of different vintages, the later enactment prevails. Legis posterior is prioris contraries abrogant. The South Carolina said the rationale is simple, a later law repeals an earlier one because it is the later's legislative will. It is presumed that the lawmakers knew the older law and intended to change it. U.S. v. Delaware Guzman Facts The defendant, together with two others, was convicted of the crime of assassinato and was sentenced to life imprisonment. When he agreed to turn himself into as a state witness for the same crime, the fiscal dropped the charges against him, as authorized under General Orders 58. During the trial, he failed to testify. So, the fiscal filed new information against him. The defendant claimed double jeopardy. Issue. Can the defendant be subsequently charged? Held. Yes. In conscrewing the statutes, which the courts are called upon to administer and apply, judicial notice may be taken of their origin and history. In this case, General Orders 58 was modeled upon Anglo-American precedents. The South Carolina examined previous cases conscrewing the law and found out that the agreement to turn as state witness can be a bar to subsequent prosecution if the accused complies with said agreement. In the case at bar, D. Guzman failed to comply with such an agreement. Therefore, the defendant's conviction of murder and sentence of life imprisonment were affirmed. Justice Shearman Moreland dissented the majority's ruling saying that there was no evidence in the record in this case to sustain the fundamental basis of the decision of the South Carolina Roman Catholic Archbishop of Manila vs. Social Security Commission. Facts The petitioner filed a request with the respondent to exempt them compulsory coverage of Re 1161, as amended. The petitioner claimed that the said law is a labor law and does not cover religious or charitable institutions but is limited to businesses and activities organized for profit. The respondent invoked that the petitioner is included as employer, as contemplated in Section 9 of Re 1161. Issue Is the petitioner considered employer that can be subject to the compulsory coverage of Re 1161? Held Yes the term employer in Re 1161 is sufficiently comprehensive to include religious and charitable institutions or entities not organized for profit within its meaning. The South Carolina said had the legislative intended to limit the operation of the law to entities organized for profit or gain, it would have not defined employer in such as way as to include the government and, yet, make an express exception of it. National Housing Authority vs. Race Facts. When the private respondent's parcel of land was being expropriated by the National Housing Authority, they withdrew P6, 600, the equivalent value of the assessed property, after the amount was deposited by the petitioner pursuant to PD 42. The petitioner later opposed to such withdrawal, claiming that the amount was too excessive. PD 464, it said, provides that just compensation is equivalent to and shall not exceed the market value declared by owner or administrator or the market value determined by an assessor whichever is lower. The respondent judge issued an order, which, according the petitioner, 
was clearly contrary to the letter and spirit of PD 464. Issue is PD 464 valid? Held. Yes, because the basic postulate in constitutional law is the presumption of validity of legislative or executive acts. Justice Jose Laurel, in the case of Angara v. Electoral Commission, said it is not for the judiciary to pass upon questions of wisdom, justice or expediency of legislation. Pot v. California Facts The Department of Environment and Natural Resources seized the respondent's truck because the driver could not produce the required document for the forest products found in the truck. The respondent said the seizure of the truck was illegal because the administrative officers of NRA allegedly have no power to seize under the Section 60A of PD 705, as amended by EO 277. The court shall order the confiscation in favor of the government. The petitioner, however, pointed out that the enforcement of forestry laws, rules and regulations and the protection, development and management of forest lands fall within the responsibilities of the NR. Issue. Is the seizure of the truck valid? Held. Yes, it is clear from the foregoing provisions of Section 68 of PD 705 as amended by EO 277, that the Secretary of DINR and his duly authorized representatives are given the authority to confiscate and forfeit any conveyance utilized in violating forest laws, rules and regulations. The South Carolina said sections 68 and 68 of PD 705, as amended by EO 277, should be read together. Takan versus California Facts. The petitioner, who was a lawyer, caused a deal of quit claim with Acopiado brothers, the respondents, conveying to the petitioner a parcel of land as his legal fees. One of the Acopiado brothers sold his share of land to another, but the petitioner secured the approval of the provincial governor of Zamboanga del Nor to the deed of quit claim in pursuant to section 145 of the Administrative Code of Mindanao and Sulu. The petitioner filed a complaint against the Acopiato brothers, saying that he be declared as the owner of the land in question. When the trial court decided in favor of the petitioner and was appealed to the Court of Appeals, the California held that since the governor revoked the approval of the deed of quit claim on April 12, 1965, the agreement made should be invalidated. The petitioner, however, argued that because for 4,252 repealed the Administrative Code of Mindanao and Sulu on June 19, 1965, the approval of Governor now became unnecessary. Issue. Can the 4,252 be given retroactive effect? Held. No. When the deed of quit claim was executed, when the approval by the Governor was given, and when the approval was revoked, the Administrative Code of Mindanao and Sulu was in full force and effect. The South Carolina said since the code was substantive in nature, the repealing statute cannot be given retroactive effect. The South Carolina added that the land in question must be presumed conjugal in nature and since the spouses of the Acopiato brothers did not consent to its transfer to the petitioner, the transaction was, at least, voidable. Villages vs. Subido Facts the Secretary of Finance, by virtue of Re 409, appointed Jose Gloria as Assistant Treasurer of Manila. Antonio Villegas, who was the mayor then, opposed to such an appointment because Re 5185 vested in him as mayor the capacity to appoint. So, he appointed Manuel Lapid to the position. Re 409, a special law, was approved in 1949. Re 5158, a general law, was approved in 1967. Issue. Which law should apply? Held. Re 409 is the controlling law. A general law, the South Carolina said, does not repeal a special law, unless expressly so provided. The South Carolina said repeals made by implication are not favored and will not be so declared unless it be manifested that the legislature so intended. Such a doctrine goes as far back as U.S. v. Reyes, a 1908 decision. Caltex v. Palomar Facts 
the petitioner conceived a promotional contest to increase patronage of its oil products, and it required the use of mail to bring the contest to the attention of the public. The respondent banned the petitioner from using the postal service to publicize the contest because he describes the petitioner's promotional contest as a lottery or, if not, a gift enterprise. A provision from the revised administrative code gives the postmaster general, who was the respondent, the authority to deny any information concerning any lottery or gift enterprise that may be deposited in or carried by the mails of the Philippines. The petitioner, however, insisted that since there was no consideration or money involved on the part of any contestant, the contest was not condemnable as a lottery. Issue can the petitioner's promotional contest be considered as a lottery? Held. No, because the contest failed to exhibit any discernible consideration which would brand it as a lottery. Therefore, the respondent had no right to bar the petitioner's public distribution by mails. The South Carolina looked into a 1922 case, L. Debate Inc. v. Topacio, to find the intended meaning of the word. Lottery. The case cited three indispensable elements of lottery, consideration, prize and chance. Also, the South Carolina said the nature of the word associated with lottery, which was gift enterprise, should be accorded similarly. Under the rule of Nositer Asasis, if lottery is prohibited when it involves considerations, gift enterprise must be construed alike.